Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick, and in this video, we're going to be comparing the Hoka Skyward X and the Asix Super Blast. So the Skyward X and the Super Blast are two big high stack kind of super trainers, I guess it's fair to say, from their respective brands. They have very expensive price tags, big stacks of foam that contain a bit of tech, some of the best foams from their brands that are designed to be daily trainers that offer a good amount of versatility, which is what you would expect for the prices, which like I say, are very high. The Super Blast costs £195 in the UK and $200 in the US. The Skyward X is a bit cheaper than that in the UK at £185, but it's more expensive than the Super Blast in the US at $225. Super Blast is a lot lighter. It's 251 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces in a UK 9, whereas the Hoka is 320 grams or 11.3 ounces in a UK 9. Uh, the Skyward X has a drop of 5 millimeters. The Super Blast drop is 8 millimeters. Super Blast stack height is 45 5.5 millimeters at the heel and then 37.5 at the forefoot. Skyward X in the men's shoe is 48 at the heel and 43 millimeters at the forefoot and in the women's it's 46 at the heel and 41 millimeters at the forefoot. So with the Asics you've got a dual density midsole with FF Turbo foam on the top and then FF Blast Plus on the bottom. FF Turbo was the brand's best foam, the stuff used in the Metaspeed Sky Plus and Edge Plus. They've obviously now got the Sky Paris and Edge Paris that has the FF Turbo Plus in it but it's still a very good foam, lightweight and bouncy. You have sidewalls of foam on that midsole to try and add some stability and an internal heel counter and a wide base again all trying to make sure the shoe is stable given the high stack you have a mesh upper with a little bit of padding around the heel not much on the tongue it's a pretty lightweight upper all round and you've got an ahar plus rubber outsole pretty good coverage there with some exposed foam but most of the key impact areas are covered not any problems of grip or durability with the super blast myself the skyward x you've got a piba midsole foam from hoka with a super critical eva frame to basically surround that piba foam foam and make it a little bit more stable. There's a lot of stability concerns with the Skyward X. You sit right within the foam at the back of the shoe. You've got a big external heel counter here, a big old plastic clip on it, pretty wide base again, you know, all designed to make sure the shoe isn't too wobbly given the high stack here. You have a convex carbon plate running through the Skyward X, whereas the Super Blast doesn't have any kind of plate. The convex plate kind of bows in the middle and then comes down again. Hoka says this is to create a suspended feeling. Uh, interestingly, the plate is not a full plate. There's lots of gaps in it, which reduces the stiffness a little bit in what is a shoe that's going to be used for training mainly rather than racing. You have a flat knit upper, quite a lot of padding on the tongue and collar, more so than on the Super Blast. Obviously, you've got this quite high heel tab at the back of the shoe as well. And then you've got good rubber coverage on the outsole, quite a thick layer as well. Obviously, there's a big cutout and a little bit of exposed foam in the middle, but in general, you've got really good rubber coverage on the outsole of the Skyward X. Comes to the fit, both of these shoes have been a good fit for me in my normal running shoe size. That's a UK 9 with the Asics, that's a US 10, and it's a US 9.5 with the Skyward X. So the Asics is the slightly longer shoe, and it actually isn't the smallest shoe. I could potentially look at going half size down myself, as I am quite small for my size, but I was very happy with both shoes in my normal running shoe size. Good hold around the midfoot, and the toe box has been comfortable even on longer runs. Don't love how high the tab goes on the back of the Skyward X, which does annoy my Achilles very slightly, or I've got no such concerns with the Asics, but in general, I will stick to your normal size. The fit's been pretty good for both of these shoes. So I've run around 60, 65k in both of these shoes and I've enjoyed using them both. The Super Blast was the shoe we had in first of the two. Obviously it came out last year and it really has set the standard for what you want to expect from these big high stack super trainer shoes that are designed to do a bit of everything and have loads of cushioning in them. It's really very light for its size. It's bouncy. It's fun to run in. You can go and do fast reps. I've done fast reps at the track in this shoe. I've done a really hard road workout as well running I think five minute reps and in general it does deliver for pretty much everything you want to run in it. It's also comfortable enough for cruising through easy runs of any length it feels particularly good over long runs i'd say you get moved through your foot strike quite quickly it's not the softest plushest most flexible shoe especially given that it has no plate in it it is still a very stiff shoe which does help push you on when you're going to run fast but it does take away some of the relaxed comfort you might have on an easy day shoe but in general it is a really versatile shoe like i say it set the standard for these big stack shoes and now all of them have got to try and live up to it and it's fair to say most of them are struggling to live up to it the hoka is a bit different to the super blast i'd say this feels much more geared for slower running that's not just down to the larger weight you have here. In general, the geometry just feels a lot more relaxed. It actually feels more flexible to me than the Super Blast, despite the fact it's obviously got a plate running through it and a big stack of foam. It feels much more relaxed. You're on the foot. It's a bit softer. It's a bit bouncier. The upper's a bit more you know, plush as well. And it really feels like a shoe that's really good for cruising through relaxed runs. Did a very enjoyable long run in this shoe. In general, you're always moving a bit quicker than you think you are when you're in the Skyward X because it is still giving you some efficiency benefits there. But it's not really one that I then enjoyed going to faster paces in. 
marathon. Like when I pushed the pace in the shoe on a progression run down towards my marathon pace, you know, it felt okay in it, but it doesn't feel great for faster paces. It feels like a trainer that's geared much more towards hoovering up a lot of high mileage daily training runs without necessarily ticking off your speed sessions as well, whereas a super last certainly has that extra versatility, I think, when it comes to those faster runs. So I did a short run in both shoes at the same time, and it really accentuates those differences between them. The Hoka feels higher, bouncier, more cushioned, more relaxed. Super last is stiffer, firmer, got certainly plenty of bounce in it, just not as much as the Hoka, and pushes you onto your toes a bit more, feels a bit more direct, and you get the slightly higher drop feeling as well, that snappy feeling through, whereas the Hoka is a bit more smooth and rockered, I would say. Overall, I think the Super Last yeah, feels a lot lighter as well when you're running them at the same time or when you're running them full stop. It's just obvious how much more light the Super Blast are and they feel more nimble despite the fact they are a big shoe. It's still not very nimble. It still doesn't feel like, you know, when it comes to speed sessions, I still prefer probably a smaller, nimbler shoe than the Super Blast, but it is unbelievably light and it certainly you know, has the speed for those speed sessions. Hoka feels much bigger, chunkier, and just is much bigger and chunkier and certainly feel that when you run in the shoe. It definitely feels much more like a cruiser to me whereas the Super Blast does have that versatility. I would also say that both the shoes were pretty stable for me during my testing. Like the Hoka is very big and it's got a soft foam, but I really didn't have any stability concerns. It wasn't really something that entered my mind at all with the shoe. So you know, maybe other people will. I am a neutral runner in general, but I do think it's been set up pretty well to you know, make sure that it does have a stable feel despite the fact it's got you know, a big stack of soft foam. Super Blast similar. It's got that wide base and that's really almost all you need of a shoe like this, I think, to make it feel quite stable. So I haven't any problems with those. Been running on you know, a mix of terrains. I still don't love how big a shoe is sometimes when you're on cambered pavements and that kind of thing, but they've both been okay. So these are both good shoes, the Superlast in particular. I think I'd pick up the Superlast ahead of the Hoka Skull Dex if you are looking for an all-rounder, if you are looking for a train that's going to handle everything, even racing, if you don't mind racing in a very high stack shoe like this that's above the legal limit set by World Athletics. Skull Dex feels much more like a cushioned cruiser. It does have a more enjoyable feel than the Superlast for easy runs. I think it is a more relaxed shoe, but at the same time, these are very expensive shoes. So I think you've really got to ask a lot of them. And I think when it comes to delivering on that price tag, it's the Superblast that does the most to do that because it is a pretty exceptional shoe i've still not really come across anything that's as good as it as a unplated super trainer it's very versatile it's comfortable it's fast it does everything really well it's really very light for its size it's you know, really impressive and when you're looking at spending 200 quid on a shoe it needs to be pretty impressive all round still say you could probably find better value shoes that do pretty much everything the super blast does you know, almost as well so like the you know new balance rebel v4 or the hoka mac 6 but it is an outstanding shoe for sure Whereas the Skull X, you know, it's a really enjoyable shoe. I liked running easy runs in the shoe, but I feel like you can get cushion shoes that do the job of the shoe for a lot less. Like, it's going to feel bouncier. It's a bit more impressive with the plate in there than I don't know, a shoe like the Glycerin or the Saucony Ride and stuff like that. Those are just normal cushion shoes, but... Do you need that extra efficiency benefit for relaxed running? I, I don't feel like I do, so I'd probably be happier just buying a cheaper shoe. And you can also get much more versatile ones than the Skull Dex as well for a lot less. Things like, like I say, like you can get a plated super shoe like the Endorphin Speed or the Hoka Max 6 even as an unplated shoe that I think is a bit more versatile all round than the Skull Dex. It does have a very enjoyable feel for easy runs. I think it delivers on the idea of like you are going to get something pretty impressive here and it does feel a little bit different to most cushion shoes, but you're paying a lot for that. I wouldn't pay that much for a shoe that just feels great on easy runs. I want to, if I'm paying that much, I want a super trainer that's going to be really versatile and can do a lot of stuff and maybe replace two shoes in my rotation. I think that's where the Super Blast price can be deemed a bit more okay. It's like if you pick up the Super Blast, you might then, if you do have a running shoe rotation normally of three shoes and you pick up the Super Blast, maybe you only have to have a two shoe rotation with one carbon plate racing shoe or that kind of thing. And then it's price seems a bit more normalized. You bought the Skyward X, I feel, still think you're going to need to buy a fast trainer and a racing shoe as well because I just don't think it's that great for fast training brilliant shoe for easy runs and high mileage weeks and long runs but like I say I think you can get that shoe for a lot less with a more normal feel and probably a more stable feel as well so picking between them I would get the Super Blast as the more versatile shoe if you do just want an easy run shoe and you really aren't concerned about price the Skull X is a very good shoe for that it is you know it's more versatile than most cushion shoes it's just not as versatile as a you know a regular daily trainer I'd say and it is great fun for cruising through long runs. That's our comparison of the Super Blast and the Hoka Skyward X. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.